Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet, it's been a minute. Uh, I wanna show you a really exciting feature that's coming to all the browsers that's called Popover API. And I'm gonna show you how we can create a fully animated uh, alert message in like 10 lines of code and zero JavaScript. And you're gonna be mind blown because it's amazing. So if you've ever deal dealt with like toast messages or pop-ups, or if you wanna do like a newsletter sign up or like a GDPR thing, um, you know, you have to like create spans and then all the crap to animate it. It gets a bit complicated and you have to deal with like dismissing, right? Adding an X, but what if you click on like the backdrop? Are you gonna dismiss it then? So I'm gonna show you how it just purely simplifies everything. All right, let's get going. I always thought it was funny that web developers are like, oh, I need my coffee. I'm like two energy drinks down and I've been awake for like half a, half a minute. I'm jacked to the tits. I need help, how do I fix this? <laughs> All right, so what do we need? Well, we need a button, and this is gonna act like a trigger for the popover. Popping each other's assholes. Uh, toggle the popover. There we go, that's it, safe, cool. So we got that running, and this is erroring out, so let's just reset this quickly. I'm running it on Astro, it doesn't matter, it's just as long as it's HTML and CSS, you should be good to go. Cool, all right, so we have a toggle the popover button right there at the top. Awesome, now I'll just add a class to this and position it absolute and I'll just drop it in the middle. So I can do top 50, sorry, half of that, left half of that, and then I can do translate X. And I can do a minus translate X. And I can do half of that. And then I can do the same thing for the Y and that's gonna pop it straight in the middle. Y, cool, and then X. Save. Perfect. Nice. Let's add a cool BG blue. A BG blue. And then a padding of Y of 2, padding X of 6. I like to go like that. That tends up to look nicely in the end. And then we'll do a text white. And cool, we have the button. I just want to make it look in the horrible box shadow. We can do a shadow as well. We'll do large and then we'll add a cool blue color to it. So we'll do shadow blue. 400. Oof, cool. That looks fine. All right, so that's just a bit of styling, so it doesn't look horrible. So the first thing that you need to do is add a target to it. So which pop-up are we targeting? So we can say uh, pop over target is equal to, and we can give it a name. So I'll just call it pop over. Now this is gonna give us a under squiggly, a red squiggly, because it is still not yet supported by all the browsers. All right, so just keep that in mind. I know it's fun and you wanna just implement it, but look at that. So 114 on Chrome. The people at Firefox are waving the white flag. They have no idea how this works. And then Edge, how is Edge? getting more features than Firefox these days. You kidding me? We all used to laugh at Microsoft and look at us now. And Safari as well. It has DI, which you determine what that means. Okay, cool. So pop over target on the button and then we'll create a div with the target of pop over. So I'll just make a div and add a class of pop over like that. Oops, sorry, this should be an ID. My apologies. It's an ID of popover so it knows what to target. And then I'll just say popover here like that. All right, cool. And then I'll just add a H1 in here and I'll just say hello. So let's test this out and see if it works. Click and look at that, hello pops on top of it. So here's the cool thing about this, that the way we used to do it back in the day You'd have to hook up some sort of, well, you didn't need JavaScript necessarily, but you have to do these funny things with uh, uh, hidden, hidden inputs basically, right? Uh, but check this out. The cool bit about this one is that, as you can see, the text shows up on top. If I add a class to this, let me just do a padding of like 12 and a background of BG of red 100. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's gonna look bad, but look at that. So here's the cool thing. It totally doesn't care about the Z index as well. So this is always gonna pop up on top of it, which is fantastic. And look, if I click anywhere else that's not on the element, it's gonna soft close that element as well. Also, I can do escape. That's gonna close it. So you got the semantic and the HTML, like accessibility all, all included, which is 
just lovely. Uh, what else we can do is, what if you want to like hook up your own functionality, right? And maybe you don't want it to close here like that. Maybe you want like an X button. So what you can do is override the pop over here. So by default, I think it's set on auto, uh, but you can change that over to manual like that. And now it's not going to close. It's not going to soft close like this, uh, but you can use two JavaScript methods uh, to do that. With all right, so now that we got that going, we can start building this out. And then I'll show you how we can add the animation as well. And just like three lines of code. So this is, again, just so I can style it up a bit so it doesn't look horrible. I also have an image here that we're gonna add. So let me just bring that in. Again, this is an Astro, so I'm gonna import it in a very funny looking way. Uh, mail from slash mail, JPEG. Cool. So let's pop this sucker in. There we go. And there it is. We have a picture. Cool. So okay, again, we need to add a class of, sorry, not a class, the ID of popover to this. I think I got rid of it. <laughs> Pop over, save. Cool. Boop. Boop. Cool. Okay. We got the image. Um, I'm going to make this a bit shorter as well. So I'll just say width of half the P of, let's do a rounded of medium, text center. And hit save. There we go. Cool. Maybe maybe a bit bigger. Oops. Half of that. What's the math? Someone tell me the math. We'll do that. That should be bigger, right? There we go. Cool. All right. So we got that. And then I'll do another div. And I'll just add some text in here. Uh, we'll do a H1. I'll just say let's learn more about the web there we go that's looking good now you might be wondering Ed cool but what about don't we need like a div to also do the background right because we we need something like this before right you do a div and maybe add a position absolute to that do top zero left zero and then you make it full width so you can add like a background of gray to it right uh, but you don't need that anymore. What you can do is simply go down here. Now I'm going to just select it with a style tag down here. And what I can do is just say pop over. So I'll grab that and I can just say backdrop now. And that's it. Now I can do a background of RGBA. I'll do zero, 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 and like 0 0.6. Poof, look at that. We have a cool backdrop already added in a couple lines of code lovely so there we go i just added a couple more stylings here and this input down here which is just yeah an input and a button and that's it cool all right so we have a backdrop down here now how can we actually animate it um this might change in the future so just be aware with it if it gets updated you can follow me on twitter i'll tweet about it uh, but what you can do is we'll grab the popover first like that. And then we can do an add symbol and we can say pop over open like that. And that's going to allow us to style uh, the popover in its open form. So if I do background red, oops, background red like that. See, it's red, but it's only red when this pop up is being opened up, uh, which is quite cool because you can style other properties as well with this pop over open. Okay, so rather than doing a background red, of course, we're gonna take this off. And what I wanna do is say opacity one, uh, because by default, what I wanna do is put the opacity down to zero. So I'm gonna say opacity is zero by default. And when it gets opened up, so when it has the pop over open, make the opacity one. And then what I'll do is just add a transition down here. I can say transform. I'll do 0 0.5 seconds and I can also do display. So I can do 0 0.5 seconds on the display and opacity 0 0.5 seconds and anything else that you want to do, you can. There we go. And I also added a little um, cubic bezier here at the end. Cool. So as you can see, the animation out works, but the animation in doesn't. So I'm not sure if this is going to change uh, because in the docs, it just shows you need this popover open. So that's quite strange. But what you can do to 
to fix it, not to fix it, but what works now that I found that works uh, is you can do a keyframe animation. So you can go down here and say keyframes. So there we go. What I did is I just changed the animation to 500 milliseconds and I just did, did a translate Y here and that's it. So if we take a look now, look at that. How cool is that? It's just like a couple of lines of code really to have a full pop-up integrated here. So yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. I'm definitely going to switch over to this as soon as there's legit browser support. If there's any less JavaScript that we can ship to the client, the better. And I'm really hoping that we get more features like this coming up soon because uh, there are certain things I feel like they are just essential in most websites. And it's a bit frustrating to have to deal with uh, these edge cases that uh, some of these um, elements might behold. So it's nice that we got this. I'm looking forward to getting more stuff like this. That would be nice. Uh, like a carousel or just like these popular UI components, right? It would be nice to just kind of have what Chat CN has, uh, but it is what it is. Anyway, thank you so much again for being here with me and I'll catch you in the next one.